Hello everyone, today we're taking a look at the Sunray from Hisingi. Not only will we be taking a look at this quad, but we'll also be taking a look at a ready-to-fly package. That's essentially what I've got. And everything about this, from the packaging to the products, it looks like it could come right off a store shelf, and I don't know about you, but that's a little bit strange for me in this hobby after all these years to see something that looks like it might belong on a shelf. What's most important about this particular kit, though, is it does not have any of the traditional FPV aspects to it. One, you're going to need a phone with access to a store that has the Hisingi app. You could probably run it through an emulator over a computer, but that computer is going to need to have Bluetooth to connect to the quad. Because without the, that app, there's really nothing you can do other than fly at the very basic level that it provides. It does give you kind of training wheels to flying FPV. As you gain experience and as you unlock their awards, which we'll look at here shortly, you can unlock or add points to the quad's performance. The angle, the, the speed at which it rises, the speed at which it, which it goes forward, how quickly it turns left and right, those things like that. When it comes to charging, everything is done over USB-C. Uh, you can charge the batteries. It has a four port charger, which I had two batteries included in my kit, uh, which would power up the quad. The goggles, which I was able to use in flight that could focus on them just fine, if you didn't notice. Yeah, I got uh, glasses, also charges over USB-C. And the controller or the radio, that too uses USB-C. Uh, the goggles and the radio have a battery inside of them. It does ship with that battery. It is an 18650 cell. If you were to need to replace that battery, you could do so. Um, various shops carry those, or you could just order them online. To get going, after you've got everything charged, uh, you turn on your goggles. I suggest doing the goggles, then the radio, and then the quad. You want to make sure they're all powered up first before you plug in that battery to the quad. It does not have an on-off switch. It's just a matter of sliding the battery in, and then it boots up, and you see that it has little LED lights on the tail end. Once you see a picture in the goggles, which you only have eight channels to choose from in the app, uh, and you can use the controller on the top of the goggles to auto-scan or to control which of those eight channels you're using, you take off and fly. Now, in the flight footage that we're currently seeing, that is me after I've unlocked several different achievements. It's not deep, deep into my flight experience, but it is uh, part of my flight experience. I did find that even as I progressed through different sorts of uh, unlocking different performance -ish, uh, performance levels, should I say, uh, to the quad, that it would fly for about six minutes inside the house. And I wanted the feature inside the house because I don't think any of my review counterparts Probably flew it much inside, but I love to fly inside because I can fly inside any time. So you can fly this inside and outside. Outside, I would suggest having the winds as low as possible. Winds will push this around, and because the performance hasn't fully unlocked yet, we don't have a lot of control to counteract any sort of winds we might have outside. Also, in the flight footage that you are seeing, that flight audio that you're hearing, that is not recorded on the goggles. Uh, quite honestly, the goggles that I received don't have the module that allow you to record your flights at all. So if you're looking at this in a kit form and you're buying the goggles from my Singy, don't forget if you want to record your flights, you don't have to have them in order to be able to see, but if you want to record your flights, you've got to have that module that fits right in the side bay of the goggles. And I'm sure you'll probably also need to furnish an SD card uh, to record those flights too. In my particular case, I'm using my own goggles so that I could show you the flight footage. And the flight audio is actually from a cell phone sitting on the table uh, next to where I'm sitting and I blend those into post. So your setup won't include flight audio, I presume, because it's very unusual to have a microphone uh, built into the DVR of the goggles. Uh, but I do so that you can get a chance to hear it. Uh, we'll dive into the app here just a little bit. It always comes up with this little splash screen, and you can skip this little six-second introduction. Uh, going into device is where the meat and potatoes of this is, and then connecting to the drone, and it tells you a little bit, oh, hey, you've got points, you can use those, and I just say, okay. So now it's going to search, but it probably won't find it, because I've got it a little ways away, but we can remedy that by going in here. You can see it says Sunray, and it gives this kind of cryptic numbers and letters. Connecting and here we go. So this is where you know, where you would bind. So out of the box, if you didn't buy this as a kit, you would have to bind. Uh, this is where you select your video channels. Pretty straightforward. You click save or disconnect. Uh, tuning is really where I wanted to go. You can see I've got another point. 
and I got another achievement between my recording and editing session here. Ten crashes. <laughs> so I've got they've got I've got one P point and one and no S points. So the S points are like uh double or you know bigger points. Uh but you can see how I could use that one point if I wanted to change some of these attributes, such as how fast it goes up, how fast it goes down, how fast it goes forward, um overall acceleration. I I think it's kind of funny how they worded these how they worded these things, but uh, yaw speed, how quickly it'd be kind of like controlling your yaw rates, um, traction control. I think that has to do with how uh, strong it it levels out the quad, because out of the box, it's always going to be trying to level the quad. Uh, and if you tap the unlock, you need a hundred of those points uh, in order to do that. And that's kind of the the fine tuning of this. Then we go into general. And you can see, you can actually tap into this box. You can change the name. I haven't done that to mine. Uh, you can actually also change the LED color. Of course I did that, and I did blue. Um, and then if you find that when it's when you don't have your hands on the sticks at all, if the quad moves in one way or another, uh, you can give it some trim uh, using these little buttons here. Um, you can see where mine, whoop, where did it disconnect? No, unfortunately, it did disconnect there real quick. I might have to get a new battery for the quad. I've got it sitting off camera with a fan on it because it is a it is a got a VTX in there. Oh, yep, I need to get a new battery. I'll be right back. Okay, got it reconnected back into general here. Uh those are the different LED covers. Um this shows you the hover trim again. And this is one that I wanted to show you is uh so if you wanted to unlock sport mode, which takes away the self-leveling. Uh, like if you tap on it requires 60 minutes of flight time and i know i've had 60 minutes of flight time problem is i didn't when i first started flying this i did not sync the app to the quad before the end of every flight so i probably lost i i i'm certain i lost two maybe as many as four or six flights um so classic is the same way you have to have 60 minutes and then it's got collision protection you can see it's on pretty strong uh, I showed you that in a couple of little uh, clips. It does not take much of a bump before it just turns off the motors. Uh, you can also change the mode, which has to do with the sticks, uh, which side your throttle is on. Like normally with mode two, throttle is here. Let me bring us into view. Throttle is here. Oh, throttle is here. See, we got, got confused there for a second. And then we have uh, yaw, and then we have pitch, and then we have roll. Mode three, I think is like backwards. I've never flown mode three. I've seen it flown, but it's confusing to me. Um, but those are different modes you can go into and it's got a learn more right there. Uh, you can also, to my surprise, somehow discharge your flight batteries for storage, which I will be doing when I'm done with recording this video. And they also, of course, have update firmware, which oddly enough, the image only kind of looks like the Sunray, but it does give you the MAC address and check for updates. And the very last thing I'd like to show you is to unregister. So if you were to have this and want to pass this on to someone else, I think you need to unregister it so they don't have any fits when they receive it. Coming back to the goggles, it's a pretty clean package. Um, I think what they're doing in here is they have a magnifier or a lens um, that actually allowed me with my glasses to go ahead and use these goggles and focus on them clearly, which is very unusual for me. Now, I don't have dramatic astigmatism or corrective lenses i think it's like a minus 0.2 on uh, my prescription um so if you have some other sort of corrective lenses it might not work for you but if you have 2020 vision it should work and i think what they ha i think they have the screen lined up up top and then they have um a lens that bounces from our viewing up to up top i think I didn't tear it down to see, uh, but you can see we got our controls right up here. And then on the bottom, I already kind of showed you our power button and then our USB-C. And then that module that I spoke about goes right here in the side. So that would be where your DVR would go and it plugs in here. I presume that works as described. Um, otherwise, I just wouldn't know because I don't have that to test. Of course, the radio is a little bit unique because in our case, and uh, traditional FPV quads, uh, things like this uh, build or uh, another sort of quad. Um, when we have our radio that usually only one of the sticks is centered, in this case, both sticks are centered. Uh, so actually, it's a little bit unique flying experience for someone like myself that's been around 
hobby grade stuff. One of the interesting things is they've got kind of a, a not just a training aspect, but a gamification of the process. Again, this is of course using their mobile app that as you go through the process, you get uh, points like for your first crash, it detects your first crash. So you get points. Uh, it detects uh, your flight logs. And I would encourage you to synchronize the app at the end of every flight. Because I do think I had a battery ejection or two and I lost that, that flight data. So I didn't get credit for the time that I was flying or for anything else that happened during that flight. But your first flight, your first crash, uh, I think at 12 minutes was another thing that I unlocked. Uh, so there's a number of different phases that you go through when you're unlocking. And there was another time uh, element that I unlocked as well. And then when you have those points, you can use those points in order to enhance the performance of the quad itself which is kind of interesting way of guiding you into the flight experience without letting, letting you get uh, completely out of control and also having the interest of you know gaining uh, points in a game sort of scenario to where you can unlock more and more and more performance. So you train your way into the higher performance that this quad can supply. And the last point that I have is, this is gonna be a product that's probably gonna be fairly specialized. Uh, like I say, to me, when I first saw it, the packaging, the products, uh, it all kind of looked like it might be on a store shelf. And so that might make you think of buying this as a toy for someone. And that, that might be the case, um, especially with the game aspect. Uh, as long as that young person uh, the, that you're buying the toy for has access to uh, the, the a store that has the Hisingi app in it so that you can synchronize, um, yeah, it would be just fine. And I think some of the things that they've done are fairly interesting. Many of us in the hobby that have been building our quads and, and buying products, um, we wouldn't be so much interested in this, but I really wanted to take a look at this particular package uh, for two reasons. Um, I had heard some good things about what they were doing with the product from other people who had done reviews on the Hisingi apps, and I wanted so much to get one of my girls who still lives with us, uh, we have a boy who's off at college, but to bring the, to see if I could tease them into getting uh, involved in FP, FPV a little bit. That's always been kind of a goal of mine. But in this particular case, there was just too much going on with their schedules to where most of the time I was flying this over my lunchtime or late at night after they were already in bed. So I didn't get to bring them into this to see if it was something that might tease them into FPV. But I do think it's probably geared mostly towards uh, the younger crowd. But if you're an older person like myself who's just getting started and RC might be new to you, uh, this would be a way to where you don't have to worry about learning some of the pitfalls of FPV. Um, because FPV has a steep learning curve. It flattens out over time, but it can be steep at first. And they have done something with their package to kind of flatten things out a little bit. It's got a nice manual with it. So if you like to read manuals, you can go through the manual and just learn about their product and how you use their product rather than having to search online or look for videos on YouTube or dig through forums like RC groups in order to take in information about how different products work to make them work as we oftentimes do in traditional FPV. This will help you get started and bring in that sort of flair of gamification of FPV training so that you can unlock more and more and more of the performance of the quad or the Sunray in this particular case. I believe Hisingi is the only place that this is sold, but I don't know. Uh, I'll take a look after I've recorded and edited the video to see where this is available. If you are interested, I'll go ahead and put a link down in the video description. Uh, again, this isn't something that I would suggest you fly outside if you live in a place like I do that's really, really windy, especially until you've unlocked a lot more performance because you can't really battle that wind too much. But as far as how everything works, it works normally. The one downfall I see in my experience is when you don't sync the flight data with the uh, application on the phone and you have a battery ejection, as I did at least twice, I think it might even been three or four times, you lose that potential achievement that you might have gotten with that flight data, whether that's building your flight time or something else that might have occurred during that flight that they will then give you points for. So. That's just a precaution. I didn't, you know, manually eject the battery and then look at my achievements on the next one. It's just, it seemed like my flight time wasn't building as nearly as quickly as I thought it was because I don't think I was synchronizing every flight at the end of the flight. I think I was going battery after battery. But if you do have any comments, questions, suggestions, or otherwise about the Sunray, the goggles, the radio, 
and the charger that's sitting over there, please let me know in the comment section below. I appreciate your time. And thanks for watching.